Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we're gonna talk about the best $700 gaming and streaming PC for December and January of 2020 and 2021. This PC can easily handle pretty much all modern titles at 1080p with their highest settings, without ray tracing, of course, and can also stream since it's using a NVIDIA graphics card with the highly efficient NVENC or NVENC, whatever, encoder. All parts were chosen with extreme consideration in regards to upgradability, the power to run brand new modern titles such as Cyberpunk and Cold War, and of course, streaming capability. You also have a good bit of storage with this PC with loads of room to get more using the second M2 slot on the motherboard or the multiple SATA ports. I also want to mention that I will be building this PC in January and will upload a full video on it with a build tutorial, Windows and drivers installation guide, and of course, benchmarks for popular games, so subscribe or keep an eye out for it. Real quick before we get started, I wanna let you guys know that I'm doing a PC giveaway. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment saying that you entered the giveaway. And after all of that is done, complete the Google form, the link for it will be in the pinned comment. So let's get started with the CPU. I chose the Intel i5-10400 processor. Now hold on, hold on, don't get all crazy because it's not a Ryzen CPU. Hear me out here. So. If you haven't noticed recently, AMD CPU prices, ooh, pretty bad. Either way, the 10 for 100 is a phenomenal processor. At the time of this video's upload, it can be found for around $155, which is a much, much better price to performance ratio when compared to the 3600's overpriceness. Yeah, that's a word now. But yeah, seriously, I've done builds using the 10 400 and it's great. When compared to the 3600, you're seriously not looking at much of a frame rate difference. Productivity, on the other hand, is a little more of a drastic difference, but most of you guys are going to use this PC for mostly gaming, and that's the perfect reason to use the i5 10 400 for this $700 build. It's a much, much better deal to put that extra 50 to $70 you'd be saving from using an i5 10 400 over the 3600 towards a better graphic graphics card. Let's look at the specs. Six cores, 12 threads, base clock of 2.9, boost clock of 4.3 gigahertz, and hyper threading. No overclocking, but that's all right. Out of the box, your performance will be great. And most of you guys don't really do overclocking anyway. And I understand it's always great to have that option, but again, the 10 400 right out of the box, perfectly fine. Next, let's talk about the CPU cooler, the Scythe Kotetsu Mark II cooler. Scythe is quality. They're not as known as the bigger names, but they certainly should be as their coolers have phenomenal cooling ability for their budget prices. This cooler comes with a great 120 millimeter fan and should do a perfect job of keeping our 10 400 at healthy temperatures. Yeah, we don't wanna be using the Intel stock cooler. Ooh. This cooler could also totally cool a stronger overclock CPU if you ever decide to upgrade your processor in the future. No matter how you put it, this is a strong, capable CPU air cooler and is certainly the best option for this price range. Moving on, we have the motherboard. I chose the MSI MAG B450M Bazooka Micro ATX motherboard. Let's look at the specs. We have four RAM slots with a maximum capacity of 128 gigabytes and a maximum speed of 2933 megahertz. If you come from an AMD build that may seem a little slow to you, but no, it's pretty typical with Intel builds. One PCIe slot, usually you'd see two, but 99.9% .9 of you guys will only be using one of those, so it should not be problematic at all. Like I said earlier in the video, this board has two M2 slots, meaning that upgrading your storage should be super easy. All things considered, this board is perfect for this budget for both upgradability and power delivery. For the RAM, I chose Adata's XPG Z1 16 gigabytes, so two sticks of eight gigabytes RAM. This is a pretty easy choice as this is 3000 megahertz, so it'll fulfill the motherboard's max memory speed of 2933 megahertz, has a CAS latency of 16, which is pretty typical for mid-range gaming builds, and is 16 gigabytes, which is the recommended amount for modern games. 16 gigabytes should hold you over for a few years, and if you ever decide to upgrade, the motherboard has four DIMM slots, so it'll be super easy. It also has a white, silver, and black color scheme, so it'll totally look pretty nice in this PC. Next, let's talk about the storage we'll be installing in this motherboard. I chose the highly regarded Samsung 970 Evo 500 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive. This is definitely one of the faster solid state drives out there. With 500 gigabytes of storage, you'll easily be able to have a decently sizable game library. And like I said earlier, since there's two M2 slots, 
upgrading to have more SSD storage will be super easy. With this M2 SSD in specific, you'll find that your PC will boot up at light speed, windows will be super snappy, and loading times will be very quick in games. This is also a super popular SSD for a very, very good reason, making this probably the best choice for a 500GB SSD in a mid-range PC. Alright, and now for the part you've probably been waiting to hear about, the graphics card. I chose the GTX 1650 Super. The specific 1650 Super I picked out is the Asus Tough Gaming OC variant. This is certainly one of the better versions of the 1650 Super, but you don't have to use this 1650 Super in specific. I'm totally aware of how graphics card prices are fluctuating like never before, so you could use a different 1650 Super if you'd like. I'll have three different options in the description, and you should really just pick the one that is closest to MSRP. Either way, let's talk about how this 1650 Super will do in gaming. It will perform just fantastic for you 1080p 144Hz gamers, and if you want to play in 1440p, you can, but you'll have to either lower the settings a good bit or be playing a lower demanding title. I will be having full benchmarks for this PC on popular modern titles in mid-January, but for now you'll have to take my word for it or wait until the video is up. I will put the link to the video in a pinned comment once it's uploaded and in the description. But yeah, there's good reason behind why people call the 1650 Super the budget king. And that's because of how much performance you're getting for its great low price. Next, let's talk about the power supply. This was not a difficult decision at all. I chose the EVGA BR 450 watt, 80 plus bronze certified power supply. I have used EVGA's BR power supplies in probably like four to five builds now, and they're just solid. When choosing your power supply, you don't want to mess up and EVGA has always been one of the most solid choices. Keep in mind that the power supply is that one part that is supplying hundreds of watts to your different components and has the full potential to break your whole PC in less than a second if it malfunctions. So never underspend or slack off when getting a power supply. Anyway, 450 watts should be just fine for this PC since PC Part Picker estimates that this computer will have an overall TDP of 259 watts. It also leaves room for a decent bit of upgrading. Last but not least, we have the case. You 100% don't need to use the case I choose. You can use any micro ATX case you'd like, but I chose out the Dark Flash DLM21 micro ATX case. One of the better cases out there when you're looking for something that's affordable, small, and has a nice large glass side panel. It even has a mesh front panel option if you're looking for something that will provide better cooling ability and airflow. But yeah, that's it for this PC discussion video. I will have all the parts for this gaming build very soon and we'll have it all filmed, edited, and uploaded by around early or mid January. The reason I make these types of videos is so I can give a little bit of a deeper explanation as to why I choose the parts that I choose. If I integrated all of this into the final video where I do the build tutorial, it'd end up being super long and make the video a bit messy. So I'd rather do it in a completely separate video. So yeah, that will do it for this video. If you plan on building this or have built it, let us know in the comment section below as I am sure the community would love to hear about it. I mean, I would love to hear about it. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Peace out.